have a friend who tore her ACL last season, and her first game back, she retore the same ACL. And you can change that. Understanding the anatomy of the knee is needed to understand the foundation of this program. ACL stands for anterior cruciate ligament, and it is right here in the middle of the knee. So when it tears, you lose all stability in your knee, and your quad muscles in your knee have to keep it stable as much as they can. This exercise program will help strengthen your quad muscle so if it does happen, your leg is strong. Girls are eight to 10 times more likely to tear their ACL versus boys because they have wider hips and their legs bow in. They're also just inherently not as strong as boys. Women are even weaker during their menstrual cycle because they have a higher risk of injuring their knees because of less blood circulation to the legs. When a player tears their ACL, it is most likely because they landed wrong after jumping. According to Girls Can Jump, ACL injuries usually come not from running into another player, but from frighteningly simple ways. Landing on a straight knee, suddenly stopping or playing the foot to change direction. This program teaches girls not only to jump, but also how to land. The foundation training program was created by Dr. Eric Goodman, and it was started to help back and core pain. These exercises are more of just stretches that are not meant to cause fatigue. They stabilize the muscles so if something does happen, the leg can overcompensate from the injury. And it, is proved to, it has been proved to relieve pain. I am working with our strength and conditioning coach here at HSC, along with our athletic trainers, to make this program the most efficient it can be. ACL injuries happen way too often. Most of this can prevent it, be prevented with these simple exercises. I believe this program, and I think it can help. Thank you for your time. Questions, suggestions, or points of clarification for Allison, although I call it team. <laughs> um, Allison, you did a very, very nice job. Thank you. I think your, your, your data was very well presented at the beginning of the numbers. The anatomy lesson that people have to understand is perfect. Us being a nurse, I see these all the time. And um, I would say to you, one thing you might consider is when you get a, a person who's accepted and earns a spot on your teams, that that preparation of strengthening, that all of that needs to happen really way before just a warm up. And you know, if you, you really, if you're an athlete, you are working on that anyway. Um, but that's kind of one of those things you might think about once they're accepted onto the team. They, they should already have some sort of built. Okay, and so when you when you do the warm up, you're just going to add to that. So you might think about how do you get people who are interested in playing a sport? Let's take girls basketball. How do you get a message to those? If you're going to play girls basketball, these are some of the exercises you might want to do so that you come with your leg prepared. Okay. Right, and then the warm ups make a big big difference on somebody that's already strengthened those areas. Because doing it in a warm up, and it's like a quick. It doesn't work. You know that. Yes. <laughs> I, but I think you did a really nice job with what you've done. I think you have a great plan. Thank you. And I love your experience and you talk about that because you made yourself very credible. Thank you. Thanks for putting me good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'd be curious, <clears throat> is there any way to determine, uh, are there risk factors that would identify that someone is more likely to be at risk to tear their ACL? And it, is, is that something that you researched at all, or you know? Um, like, what do you mean? Like, did they Just body type, hit, uh, family history? You know, are mm -hmm. there indications that would say one person versus another is more likely uh, to be at risk for tearing their ACL? Yeah, sometimes um, you can tell by like the way that they walk. So like sometimes if their their feet bow out a little bit, then you can tell that maybe they're more at risk of tearing their ACL. Um, and some trainers can see that from when they see them start to run or see them walking down the court. So that could be that's And is compression um, a preventative measure on ACL? Something where, you, you know, like compression wear or um, are there things you can do to stabilize at risk um, candidates? Um, I don't think there is. I mean, they wear um, knee pads. So, like, they, they have something that's compressed around their knees, but um, I don't, there's not really something to like help prevent that from happening. After it happens, there's a lot to do before, there's not really much of that. Okay, thank you. 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 Thank you.
Just one thing that kind of left me curious is you know, I'm kind of a, a data nerd by location, but uh, you 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 identified needs within the HSE community, and I was wondering if there were macro trends. You know, um, girl female basketball players ACL tears are increased. You know, 35 percent over the course of five years or something like that. Um, just something to support the, the the micro evidence that you have here. But that's just something that maybe, that maybe that's just me, but it would be interesting to have a, a more complete picture of the, the entire youth. I'm going to say that we can definitely find. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Yeah. 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 I know it has increased, yeah. but the stuff that I found on like why it's increased is more because it's more aggressive. It's becoming more yeah. aggressive every year and because more people are playing the sport. So I didn't really find a percentage but, I mean, it's it's like more people are playing the sport, so it's going to go up. But. Yeah, I was going to have you talk a little bit about, um, I got those slides that had the, the actual exercises on them, whatever, but talk a little bit about the implementation of this. Um, I know you've been talking about this, but this is Coach Hub and mm -hmm. that's in such case. So, like, what does it look like for our girls' basketball team in terms of training starting now, summer? I don't know. Talk about that. So I've talked to our varsity girls basketball coach and um, our strength and conditioning coach here at HSC, and um, they are going to be implementing this, these exercises before practice starts. So our girls basketball team will be doing these instead of their normal stretches that they've done for the past few seasons. They're going to start these stretches. Um, they're going to be doing this in the off season starts because they want to get them into it and get them doing it regularly so that it can actually help. So they're going to start this in the off season, so during like the beginning of the summer, and then they're going to do it through the season. So that's through. How long does it take to do the 15? Um, I actually haven't tried or tried to time that yet, um, but it should be around. It's around what they do already, so it should be around like 15 minutes or something. Are there any counter stretches that you would look at? been talking to the strength and conditioning coach and he's going to be implementing these exercises with his um, girls weights classes during the day so they'll be doing those too we have one company at launch fishers that you might want to research uh, in, in your spare time they uh, they are in the active compression wear uh, market and if you think about under armor that you put on and that material kind of squeezes against you imagine if that material were smart enough to sequentially compress to move blood flow around your body. That's what they do. And their three markets are um, uh, athletic pre-covery and recovery, they call it, uh, military and medical post-op. So uh, it would be something, it's a company right here in Fishers that ultimately will be a global uh, thing. Their products will be coming out in 2017 and they're talking to all the companies that you would imagine uh, to embed their technology in garments and, and clothing. Okay. But it might be something that uh, you could meet with them to see if uh, if there's any research that backs up that this could help with uh, with ACL injuries. So what are they called? Recovery Force. And last year they were in. Uh, so this is the, the blatant promotion. Um, last year they were in uh, the Launch Fishers High School Fellowship, and we took a high schooler, and he spent all summer with them, uh, worked 30 hours a week. Uh, the interns get paid 10 bucks an hour. They go through a boot camp with us, and they get uh, they get immersed into an entrepreneurial company, and they were participants last year. They may do it again this year. Okay. Anything else for Timmy? I think this is way cool, and my favorite thing about it is that you've been absolutely on fire about it since day one, um, and that and that flame hasn't hasn't closed on fact. Fire about something, don't stop. So, 
I mean, when you lose that passion, that's bad. <laughs> <laughs> so right. yeah, I, I can feel that easily in your your yeah. your passion. Good job. Okay, thank you, team. <sighs> Sam or Shay? I don't know who's next. Uh, on the list, I was last. I think okay. I'll go. Shay, you're up. 